A new study conducted by the World Health Organization predicts that about 83,000 to 190,000 people in Africa would die from the COVID-19 virus. An estimation of 29 million to 44 million people is likely to get infected with the virus if the COVID-19 virus is not properly contained. The new study by the WHO Regional Office for Africa was conducted based on the assumption that no measures to properly contain the virus has been put into place. Fortunately, that has not been the case. Several African countries were under lockdown from the middle of March till the beginning of May. Some are still under lockdown. Others who have called off the lockdown have implemented curfews. Some countries have banned public gatherings of a certain number of people. Some countries banned the gathering of 10 or more people in one place. Other banned, others banned 20 or more and 50 or more. Now joining us live is Bolaon Olojide. Good day, Bolaon. Hey, good morning. Good day. Now, we hear of projections, 120,000 cases in Lagos by July, 190,000 deaths in Africa by August. How do they, how do they usually arrive at these figures and how believable are they? Uh, well, the figures we have seen in, um, they've kept revising it. I remember that sometimes in March, we were told that about a million people would die in Africa. Um, that one million has now become around 19,000. So that's a dramatic uh, uh, revision. <clears throat> anyway, from the numbers that we have across Africa, it's, it's possible to actually project. Um, if I take the Nigerian example, we know how many infected cases, confirmed infections we have. We know the discharge. We know the death. So we can calculate the death rate that if I have a sample of this much, this is the average number of people that died within that sample. So if I can extrapolate that onto how many infections am I likely to have by, say, June or July, it is also possible for me to know how much death am I expecting within that sample space. So those, those, those are the kind of numbers uh, they play with. We have a current situation. We also have a bit of history. So from uh, February 27 till today, there is a pattern. So we can use that pattern to extrapolate into the future and determine how many infections are we likely to have and how many people will likely die. Now, Nigeria, for one, has not gotten to its peak in terms of, you know, death toll. How does publishing this projection help the average man or woman? Uh, by itself, those numbers do not really help uh, the average man or woman. What we need to be able to use those numbers to do um, is to be able to use it as a, a, shall I call it a weapon now, as a tool of continuous citizens' education. So when we let people know what these numbers are, uh, how they we will, will be able to tell them how this infection is spreading, and we'll know how dangerous it is by being able to tell them, out of this much infection, these are the number of people that are dying. And then we use our opportunity to slot in what we think that the citizens can do to help us flatten the curve, reduce the number of infections, and reduce uh, the number of deaths that we have. So on its own, the figures themselves do not help the, the, the populace that much, but we can use those figures to connect to citizens' education uh, for the people. All right, thank you very much, Bolaon, for your time. It's always a pleasure having you on the news. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Jim. Certainly.